Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? <laughs> Blessed and highly favored. Tonight's the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. We have the power to choose. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you got the power. Use it. Yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> How many of you know God wants you to have more? The word says he's come to bring us life and life abundantly. Life abundantly. You know, there isn't anything greater than the joy of the Lord because it's his presence. Where the presence of God is, there's joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's why people overcome, because they carry the joy of the Lord. But the enemy tries to come in and bring counterfeit joy. Amen? That counterfeit joy with drugs, that counterfeit joy with all kinds of other perverse things. We don't need to go into all that tonight. Amen? How about counterfeit with success? The devil loves to replace success with God. You know, he'll take God's presence for your success. In fact, he even offered it to Jesus. Does everybody understand that? In other words, as we labor unto the Lord, our success is because of him, not because of anything we've done. When we start taking the glory for our success, we have separated ourselves from God. Is everybody okay? Everything about the Holy Spirit, his first process is to dissolve you and me. Amen? He dissolves the old man so that the new man can come forth. And unless we begin to and maintain taking off the old, you can never put on the new. People are trying to go out there and witness Christ and do all kinds of stuff, falling and making idiots out on themselves, because the old has not been removed. One of the things the Lord gave me a couple weeks ago, he said to me, he gave me a vision. He said, those are floaters. I said, floaters? And I saw people with an accord, and this cord that was in their hand. He said, they unplug themselves from the world, but they never plug themselves in anything else, so they float. And they're no good to me. And eventually the enemy will come and sweep them away. He called them floaters. I thought he was talking about things in the eyes, you know, those floaters. <laughs> Sometimes you think it's a mosquito. And it's actually a floater. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyways, he called them floaters. And they were walking around with this cord. You know, did you ever see, uh, uh, like, uh, remember the telephone operators way back? They'd have all of these cords they plug in and try and connect stuff. Any of you know Lily Tomlin or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> and Saturday Night Live, you know, one ringy dingy. You remember that? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that's what he was showing me. It was like a cord, but they, they were unplugged themselves from the world, but they were floating because they never plugged into anything else. And they were no use to God. And eventually the enemy just came and swept them away. In 1 John chapter 1. So one of the things the Lord is trying to do is bring us to a, a, not only another level, and we talked about multiple levels, and there's a third level of commitment, but he wants to bring us to more, not only revelation and impartation, but more freedom. How many of y'all want more freedom? Amen. Amen. How many of you want more of God's presence? Then you got to ask for it. You got to be thirsty and hungry. Amen? And that's something that we choose, isn't it? The power to choose. In 1 John chapter 1, is everybody there? Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 1, let's speak it. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands had handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we had seen and bear witness and declare to you that the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, 
Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. How glorious. In other words, there's something that happened to them. And they wanted to share with others or what they had seen, what they've touched. Why? They got to see, hear, and touch reality in Jesus. Eternity was in Jesus. Did you ever get, come across somebody be telling you about something until you actually see it? Amen? Somebody could be telling you about a car or whatever, or a building or a picture, whatever it is, but until you see it, you don't really get it, do you? Amen? In verse 5, would you read it? This is a message which we had heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So you may know truth, but not practicing it separates us. Has everybody got it? That's what we call disconnect. When we stop practicing truth, we disconnect ourselves. You may know the truth. There's a, believe me, there's not one person in hell that doesn't believe now. Amen? They all believe. The problem is it's too late. Is everybody okay? Verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word or his truth is not in us. So they were talking about seeing and hearing. They were going to declare it. They had such joy because they had gotten what we call revelation. Amen? Everyone say revelation. revelation. Now, something had occurred. And in this, there was a mystery. Now, mysteries are known as hidden truths. Amen? They, there was a mystery of truth that was unlocked. Everyone say unlocked. It became a revelation to those that practice truth. It became a revelation to those that who? Practice truth. Why? Because revelation, grab hold of this, revelation is when truth becomes reality. Revelation is when truth becomes reality. You will not practice truth and become, until it becomes a reality to you. You can talk about it, and you can share it because there are many people that talk about it and share it, but don't practice it. Amen? In other words, revelation is when truth becomes a reality to you. And when it becomes a reality to you, it becomes life to you. Is everybody with me? In Matthew 16, unlocking the truth. Matthew 16, and we have spoken this multiple times. <clears throat> In other words, the word says, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free, right? But the word know means to practice, because if you know something, you put it to practice, if you have reality of it. So there must be revelation. Revelation is when truth becomes real. It's a reality. And it's not just about, in other words, you can read a book and the book can say one plus one equals two. Well, that could be a truth to you. Amen? But it's not life. Does everybody understand it? It's not life. 
See, truth in this aspect is life because the person of truth is eternal life. His name is Jesus the Christ. Everything God wants for me and you is that you not only know him, but you become his son. And the character of the divine nature, that's what his desire is. Remember, Jesus is always looking for Jesus. Amen? And Matthew 16 and verse 13, let's speak it. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? In other words, have you gotten revelation about me? I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. If that has not come a reality, then you will not practice truth until it becomes reality. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you or brought revelation to you, but my Father who is in heaven. In other words, the Lord unlocked truth to him. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on the rock I will build my church. In other words, on the anointing and we've talked about the anointing which is the eternal presence and power and truth of god almighty who is all in christ and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the truth amen the presence and the power of god almighty it cannot prevail against it so how many all know that god wants you to be cloaked with his presence he wants you to be not only dressed with his presence, but his presence to flow through you. He wants to express himself in every area of your life. He is not interested in just one moment. He's interested in every moment. Every life is important to him, regardless of who, where, or what. Every life is important to him. Amen? And here it is. He said, okay. In verse 19, are you ready? And he says, and I will give you what? Keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In other words, truth became reality to Peter. Amen? It became a reality. He got revelation. Why? Because revelation is when truth becomes a reality. It becomes tangible. It becomes a part of you. Amen? Now, what occurs here, he says, and I will give you the keys. Now, keys are used for multiple things. And when God speaks in certain, in, in certain areas of keys, remember the word of God is three-dimensional, past, present, and future. Also multifunctional. These keys that he was talking to Peter about are known, these keys were given to warfare. They were given to what? Warfare. They were also given to unlock souls that were taken captive in warfare. Does everybody got it? Why? Because you bind spirits and lose people. You know how many souls that are taken captive right now? That God is waiting for someone to release them? Just by intercessory prayer, Lord, that's where you bind the powers of darkness. You come against those powers of darkness and you ask the Lord to dispatch angels on behalf of all the souls that have been taken captive. And that they be released not only into his hands, but into his house. So we see here these keys that God was giving, because these are keys of the kingdom, was to warfare and unlocking souls taken captive and also unlocking truth blocked by Satan. So everybody got it. Unlocking truth blocked by Satan. Why? Because deception blocks truth. So when a person is deceived, they, they're, they're having a hard time getting truth. 
Why? But you, they can't practice the truth. Why? Because only through revelation, where truth becomes a reality, do you practice it. So what happens, the enemy comes in to bring deception and can put a person on another course where truth has been diminished as re of reality and deception has taken over. Remember, flawed belief systems create flawed perceptions, don't they? And it's very easy to pick up something that's deceptive. That's all it takes is one agreement with it. And it has a ripple effect like a domino's. Revelation chapter 1. So whose responsibility is it to unlock the truth? Ours. Amen. Glory. Revelation 1.12. Then I turned and I to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth when a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his hand right upon me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. And I am he who lives and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the what? The keys of Hades and of death. Then he says, write the things which you have seen, the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. What was he telling him? He's saying, look, it, I have the keys. Remember I talked about multifunctions? Amen. God has multipurpose things. The word is three-dimensional. In these keys, he says, I have the keys of Hades and of death. In other words, I have, not only has he taken dominion and held, but he has revelation for me and you about hell. Amen? And a revelation for me and you about separation from God by death. Reality. See, when you really get a reality that hell awaits anyone willing to disobey God, does everybody understand that? When you have a reality that hell is real, that changes courses, doesn't it? Because who you serve when you die is where you go. But I accepted Jesus 20 years ago. Well, who are you serving now? Amen? That's amazing because even when I was out there used and I knew that every hit I took of dope if I died, I was going to hell. So he asked, I used to ask God, God, if I die, after I take this hit, bring me home. But he kept saying, I can't. It's amazing how crazy we get when we're out there using, drinking, partying, not realizing that every time we took a hit of anything or a drink or whatever, with that one breath away from hell. Oh, hallelujah. So he was saying, I, I've got the keys for you so that you can have revelation of hell and eternal separation, which will bring death. Amen. So what he's saying here is, look it. I also have for you that I hold the keys of hell that if you follow me, you can avoid it. If you follow me, there won't be a separation. But I will release a revelation so that the fear of God can come in. See, the fear of God is reverence, honor, and respect. It's amazing because when people don't have revelation, they just do whatever. They just do whatever. They, they walk more in assumption than they do in reverence to God. That's what the Lord says. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in me. Cast your cares upon me. Amen? All of these areas that he tells us. Why? He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
That's that reverence, honor, and respect. Amen? See, Jesus paid such a tremendous price for me and you. When Jesus died on the cross, he unlocked truth. But it's been blocked by the ruler of this world through deception. So it's your responsibility and mine to unlock it because he's given me and you the keys of the kingdom to unlock truth. Amen? He's given us the anointing and the power to unlock truth. See, religion doesn't know how to unlock truth. They're too busy trying to be holy when they can't. Amen? They just can't do it. So they try to dress. They try to do all kinds of things that make themselves look holy. But it don't work. <laughs> And Luke 11. Hallelujah. You can't be holy without the Holy Spirit. That's why he's called holy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Luke 11. And let me tell you, holy has nothing to do with how you feel, amen? You can't go around, I feel holy today. <laughs> you might step in a puddle and it will ruin the whole thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke 11, <laughs> in verse 46, somewhere around there. Dear God, what did I do? Oh, I'm in 12, that's why. Thank you. Luke 11, 46, is everybody there? Let's speak it. And he said, woe to you also lawyers. Oh, those lawyers, woe to you. Especially those uh, public pretenders. <laughs> For you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you built their tomb. Therefore, the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which were shed from the foundation of the world may be required in this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the temple. Yes, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the what? key of knowledge. Knowledge is truth. So people did not know how to unlock knowledge because deception was brought forth. You did not enter in yourselves and those who were entering in you hindered. He's talking about the religious sect. Remember, knowledge is truth. The key to, was to unlock it but deception blocks it from people. Amen? In Luke chapter 2. You know, when revelations, which is the reality of truth, let me tell you, when it comes, when it's released, when it's unlocked, when, you, when it becomes, when it hits you, it's almost like a, what? Really? Whoa. It's overwhelming. Does everybody get it? It's overwhelming. It's life changing. It's not just goosebumps. Your hair doesn't stand straight up. It's when God chooses to unlock something for you or when you go to unlock it 
And that's our responsibility constantly to unlock truth. So revelation comes, which is truth becoming a reality. It brings you into a, it. More of you goes, more of him comes. Has everybody got that? More of you go, more of him comes. Revelation is essential to every one of us. We should be seeking it all the time. And that's where he says, those who thirst and hunger shall be filled. Amen? We should be thirsty and hungry for revelation. We should be in thirsty and hungry for God's presence. We should not be putting ourselves first. When you do, when you put yourself first, first, you'll find that revelation doesn't come the way it used to. One of the things that blocks unlocking of the truth and the revelation is sin. It's impossible to operate the keys when sin is in life. It's already got it. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 2, in verse 25. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Why? Because he could not live in him. Amen? Because Jesus had not died yet and released the Holy Spirit. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. So did he get revelation? Amen. That he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now he was the devout man. That means he was doing something. He was a man of prayer. And it's in prayer where truth is unlocked. It's only in prayer where truth is unlocked. Amen? All right. So he, so he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. Verse 32, read it. A light to bring what? Revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Now, what's revelation? It's truth when it becomes reality. Amen? That's what revelation is. Truth when it becomes a reality. So Jesus paid the price for me and you on the cross to unlock truth to those who are willing to submit to him. The first part of unlocking truth was to bring salvation to mankind. He unlocked that himself. And the second part was releasing the Holy Spirit to mankind so that the Holy Spirit could live in a person and no longer just come upon a person. Why? Because then Jesus would be in them and communing with them. So that those who were led by the Spirit would be sons and daughters of God and they'd be seekers to unlock truth. Truth that has been hidden is called mysteries. Truth that is hidden is called what? Mysteries. Go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Now, you cannot, uh, let me share this with you because so many think, people think that emotion is revelation. It isn't. Does everybody understand that? Emotion is not revelation. 
It's not. But I can tell you that a fruit of the revelation will produce righteousness. Amen? And that is a fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? Now, when that fruit becomes, their junk becomes joy, isn't there? So, in other words, so many people think that emotion is revelation. Oh! No, not always. It's not like that. Oh, I got revelation. This is the car. I got revelation. This is the person. I got revelation. <gasps> See, that was emotion. So, so many people misinterpret revelation and the counterfeit of emotion. Because when it comes, you just want to give him all glory. It has nothing to do with self-fulfillment or desire. It's an area where you're awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> and the joy comes because your daddy just spoke to you. Proverbs 29. And again, when that happens, you're, there's a part of your pro righteousness is produced. Why, man? You know, you become the, the more reverence because more of you leaves and more of him comes. In Proverbs 29, verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Where there is no revelation. Now, what's revelation? Truth, reality. Amen? The people cast off restraints of the flesh. Does everybody understand that? They can't cast off, because see, there's restraints. We restrain ourselves so that we want to please God, so we're not doing the things in the flesh of selfish ambitions or whatever. So where there's not a revelation, the restraints get loosed. And now there's more looking for feel, fulfillment, Instead of revelation. Because through revelation, I want you to know you get fulfilled. But where there's not revelation, deception comes to mislead for a false fulfillment. Then people will begin to do all kinds of strange things. Because there's a mislead, not a lead. Is everybody okay? So, in this he says, where there is no revelation, a reality of truth, the people cast off the restraints. Why? Because remember what happens in this. Less of you and more of him comes. So when there's not more of him coming, you know what's coming? More of you. But happy is he who keeps the law. Has everybody got this? No restraints, no revelation, no restraints of the flesh. Why? No reality of truth. Colossians chapter 1, or chapter 2, Colossians 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak this together, please. <clears throat> for I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you, and those in Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of the mystery of God or the truth. See, when knowledge is there, it's associated with truth. Both of the Father and of, of Christ, in whom are hidden all the what? treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So does God want you to unlock those? Yes. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk 
in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. We are battling it daily. Everywhere you turn, at your job, where people go to school, where people are driving down the road, through billboards, all kinds of things, you're battling it all the time. Why, that influence of the world, the principal things, the principal principal traditions of man is trying to always overtake what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? What's this? Well, all of that's always trying to impress, impress you. But I'm going to tell you, it can't penetrate if you're in right position. Amen? If you're in right position, it cannot penetrate. Why? Because the enemy, remember, there's two things he rules this earth with. is deception and fear. Deception and fear. If, the, if fear is there, you know. You know. If you're still fighting for your life instead of surrendering it. If you're still in survival mode instead of surrender mode. You obviously haven't had revelation lately. Amen? But God is calling us to unlock truth so that we can have revelation that becomes a reality, and then it's less of us and more of him. Verse 9, would you read it with me? For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. In other words, these hidden treasures, all hidden of wisdom and knowledge of truth, waiting, there's so much to be waiting for me and you to be unlocked. Paul was one who unlocked much. If you read all of Paul's letters, he unlocked much truth. He loved to do it. There should be a desire in your spirit. You should want to not only love truth, know truth, but unlock it so that more truth is released. Amen? Amen? Ephesians 3. Fade away. We've just entered danger zone. Why? Because we're not practicing truth. And truth can only be practiced by revelation. Amen? Revelation. Why? Because there must be a reality of truth to be practiced. Or it gets tainted smeared, cloudy, and it's no longer practiced. It's no longer a priority. It becomes compromised and complacent, lazy, or other things are now priority. Amen? Ephesians chapter 3, in verse 1. Let's speak it together. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you had heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by what? Revelation. He made known to me the what? Mysteries. Now look at this. Revelation is a reality of truth, right? A mystery is hidden truth. So Paul was an unlocker of truth. Glory. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge, which is truth, in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs 
of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his what? Power. Now, this is phenomenal. Revelation, reality, truth. Paul was able to unlock these treasures and display them on paper. And that's what you and I read. Because somebody was willing to pay the price to go deep in prayer and seek. Does everybody get this? Listen, there's more revelation out there. There's more truths that need to be released and unlocked. And the greatest thing that truth brings is when we practice it is freedom. Freedom. Romans 16. Freedom. Everyone say freedom. freedom. Is for me. Verse 25. Let's read it. Now to him who is able to what? Establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. But now made manifest by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations. He calls them prophetic scriptures. Why? Because they were unlocked Truth was unlocked, became a revelation or reality, and it was spoken in because things that are spoken are prophetic and then written. So what we are reading here is a prophetic book. And we speak prophecy through this book. The testimony of Jesus is called the spirit of prophecy. But now made manifested by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of every of everlasting God for the obedience to the faith to God alone wise and be glory through Christ Jesus forever established by unlocking truth that brings revelation or reality of truth remember the devil comes to what steal kill and destroy he's always trying to exchange those things always he offers the same things that he offered Jesus. He offered him prosperity for an exchange. He offered him dominion and power for an exchange. He offered all kinds of things to him for the exchange. Amazing, isn't it? That the devil was trying to tempt God. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Because he... The devil could not get revelation that Jesus was God. Amen? Because only through the Holy Spirit can revelation come. So he had no ability to unlock truth. Never has and never will. He's the author of deception. He is a liar and never can tell the truth. He can paint it so that it may look like truth, but it never can manifest to where it brings freedom. Never. Amen? Oh, glory. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 4. So when somebody says, I got revelation without the fruit of righteousness, it's the wrong revelation. It's not revelation, it's emotion. Amen? It's emotion. Glory. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? <laughs> verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? All right. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. What's a mystery? Hidden truth. Ah, that means we are stewards. If we're stewards, that means that you and I are called to unlock the truth. 
because a mystery is hidden truth. So we're called to unlock these hidden truths to bring them forth in. So that revelation comes in, it becomes a reality. This truth becomes a reality and it exchanges you for him. There's always more. So you're becoming more diminishing to yourself. Your self is becoming more dissolving and he's becoming more alive. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Verse 2. Moreover, it is required that one be found what? Faithful. That means consistent. One must be consistent. Because consistency will not. Without consistency, you can't get, you know, you'll lose it. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from who? From God. Hallelujah. Stewards of the mysteries, hidden truths. Saints have this privilege to unlock those things to come to reality. That is a privilege. That is an honor. Remember, Jesus said to them, he said, to you it's been revealed that you may know the mysteries of God. Why? Because he was. He, 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 he came. He was unlocked. You know? I mean, he was totally unlocked, man. He was walking eternal presence and truth. So it, when he was speaking to them, it was revelation all the time. It was up to them, though, to accept it and believe and receive it so that it could become a reality to them. See, even though you may get truth, it must become revelation. If it's not revelation, there's no exchange. You stay the same, and that's all you're building up is a shelf of knowledge. And not using it. Amen? Glory to God. Matthew 7. In verse 7. Are you ready? This is how you're going to unlock it. What does it say? Ask. And it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Does everybody get that? See, seekers get to unlock truth. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be what? Open. That's why Jesus is known as the door. But see, some people just go show up at church and Go home and don't, don't do any seeking. They do a lot of reading, but not enough seeking. Does everybody understand? See, you've got to press through dimensional barriers. And when you press through dimensional barriers and you break through that arena, because when you touch his heart, he touches your heart. And there is a release because what he's trying to do is get something to me and you all the time. But you must press through the dimensional barriers of deception. Amen? That's our responsibility. God is looking for stewards to fulfill the mysteries of God. Amen? Does everybody get that? You're not here by coincidence tonight to hear this message. So everybody's accountable. Amen? <laughs> what man is there who you, uh, what man is there among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who? Ask him. Ask. 
seek, knock. Those are keys that God has given me and you. It's the same key of deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Amen? But of course, there will be resistance from the enemy. Always resistance from the enemy. 1 Peter chapter 5. <laughs> or whatever it may be. He does not want you to. Amen? He will do everything that he can to prevent you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit you, yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility, humbleness. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, bring to you, casting your care upon him for he cares for you. Amen. Be sober, which means what? Alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Why? Because what? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour or deceive or mislead or block from unlocking truth. Resist him. Resist him when you feel tired. Did you ever notice you can pick up any book and you're okay? You pick up the Bible. <laughs> Hello, you want to go to sleep at night? Pick up the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you can hold one hand in each, a, hand on each, a Bible in each hand. You can be <laughs> I can't sleep. Pick up the Bible. <laughs> Why? Because the spirit of slumber and deaf and dumb come upon you. They don't want you to know nothing. You're not fighting flesh and blood. You're fighting powers of darkness. Same thing in praise and worship. Oh, I'm tired. Ah, <laughs> oh, you wimp. You eat out there and work like your butt off, and when it comes time to worship God, I'm tired. Hallelujah. Anyways, when it's physical fat, uh, flesh, I mean uh, paper, money, <laughs> they love that. I get rewarded instantly. I can buy something. False fulfillments. I'd rather unlock truth you know why? Because the more you do that, he brings the things to you. You don't have to work 90 hours a week. Oh, we can go on that another time. All right, let's go back to verse 8. Be what? Sober, which means what? Alert. Be what? Vigilant, which means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, the bonehead, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour or mislead, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered. In other words, you had to go through that experience to learn something. After you have what? suffered <laughs> a while <laughs> perfect a look at the suffering he's going to bring it's going to bring what perfection he's going to not only allow you to suffer a little bit but he's going to perfect you establish you strengthen you and settle you so that you're not movable or so that you utilize what you have learned and you can understand the strategies of the enemy when they come And to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. This is for me and you. 
It's our responsibility to unlock truth so it becomes revelation, a reality. There are hidden mysteries that have not even been, uh, been released yet. Look at all the uh, revelations that have come forth in the last few years and whatever, especially about the Nephilims and the giants and Luciferian agendas. There's so many things that are being released. Why? Because the Lord told Daniel that knowledge would be released. Revelation knowledge would be released. It would increase in the latter days. Why? Because the enemy is increasing and God's children must increase. God wants to increase his presence and power for me and you. And revelation so that we keep the restraints on and don't let them go. Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word. And thank you, Lord, that you've given us the authority and the power and the desire to not only ask, seek, and knock, so that we can unlock truth, which can bring revelation so that it takes less of us and more of you. Jesus, let this seed manifest in each and every one. Bring to us remembrance every day as we become seekers. Early in the morning will I seek your face so that revelation can be released and bring a reality of truth to each and every one here today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory of God.